The Live Viper 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Another beautiful day without a cloud in the sky. However, that's going to be changing. Clouds in the sky and rain returns. A full look at your Viper 6 forecast is coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 and 4, a federal court of appeals issues a ruling in the Lock and Dam lawsuit. What was decided and what happens now? Also ahead, honoring some of the country's first veterans, where the remains of Revolutionary War soldiers found in Camden are headed today. And what health officials in South Carolina are planning next to keep toxic forever chemicals out of drinking water. Your news at 4 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. Jenny Montgomery. Hi, Brad Means. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. As coverage you can count up against with the Beach Island, South Carolina Water District, trying to get a grant so they can fix their aging water system. That's after a business fire. Two fire hydrants in the district near Dollar General are still not working. The hydrant's more than 60 years old. Makes it tough to make repairs. But a grant from the state leaders say could fix this. Trying to get in now to replace those water lines and uh, other water lines, put in new tanks, put in uh, emergency standby from the wells that we've got in service, and uh, and just improve the quality of water and the volume of water in Beach Island. If the water department gets approved for the grant, the changes would take about a year to be in place. And Augusta family wants... The city should use this as a chance to go sit down with the Corps and find a solution that will allow the construction of that fish passage while still protecting the pool. Augusta Transit wants to make biking easier in the Garden City. An input session was held earlier today for bike riders. The goal is to figure out how you can take your bicycles onto city transit buses more easily. It's part of the city's arts and bicycle pedestrian plan. Every five to ten years, that master plan is updated. The last one was completed in 2012. So uh, a lot of transit users, there's some are also folks that walk and bike uh, quite a bit too to get to their final destination. Um, especially most buses have bike racks as well. And so we're getting feedback as far as what kind of improvements will help them make their final connection to their final destination as far as bike lanes, sidewalks. Um, not all the buses currently have bike racks, um, although all the will be updated with bike racks. Uh, Another public session will be held today from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. in the Linda Beasley Conference Room at the Municipal Building. The results will be used for the strategic development of Augusta Transit. A local school for neurodivergent and underserved students celebrating a big award today with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. News Channel 6's Hannah Latier live at our Satellite News Center with more information. And Hannah, this really is a big deal. Yeah, it is, Brad. Soar Academy in Evans received a $500,000 award from the Yas Prize organization, beating out some serious competition. Out of 2,700 applicants, Soar was one of the nine schools across the nation selected for the award last year. The school gives individualized education to students with autism, ADHD, dyslexia, and other learning disabilities. With the money, they plan to purchase land to expand the school in the next few years. They also plan on having enough space for more students to enroll by fall. But our model is to catch those kids up that are falling between the cracks. We're after the kids that no one wants. And they come here, you know, they got these resumes that are just terrible behavioral, um, defiance, uh, anxiety, and the class shuts down. And you come here, smaller environment, multi-sensory, flexible schedule, and they're soaring. All that goes away. Kenesha hopes to one day expand SOAR Academy nationwide, and the deadline to apply for the 2023 YAS Prize is July 15th. Live in the Satellite News Center, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. We've all heard of the keto diet, but is it worth it? One dietitian says she may have the answer. We're going to hear from her as News Channel 6 at 4 continues. In recent years, 
The keto diet has earned the top spot as one of the most popular food plans. Taylor Murray now talking to a dietitian who unpacks the low-carb, high-fat diet to tell us if it's really worth the hype. The ketogenic diet, or for short, keto diet, goes against the grain, literally. So traditionally, we um, consume carbohydrates. Carbohydrates break down into glucose, and we use that glucose as our energy source. When um, we are following a keto diet, we're kind of shifting gears a little bit. We're going into using ketones, which are digested fats, as our energy source. Jalek Patel, a registered dietitian, says the USDA recommends about 50% of our diet come from carbs and less than 30% from fat. In a keto diet, we're looking at about 5% of um, carbohydrates coming from our calorie source and um, about 70% coming from fat. Patel says the fat diet has some short-term perks. Keto has shown um, to support weight reduction short term, so if you're looking to lose some weight, can help with that, and it can also support like insulin resistance, so we're seeing a little drop in blood sugars. The long-term effects of the diet, however, she says, are unknown. We're looking at cutting out a macronutrient, so in this case we're cutting out carbs. Long term, it is not sustainable. She says most patients who lose weight at first on the keto diet end up plateauing several months in, so they go back to eating carbohydrates. But in that process, you're shifting your metabolism. That shift can be jarring to your body. Patel also warns some report feeling very sick on the keto diet. They'll start having these um, flu-like symptoms, um, which um, can be anywhere from like nausea, vomiting, um, sometimes they're getting GI distress, Lo a little bit longer term, so say after like six weeks, seven weeks, you're starting to get more dehydrated, constipation. And overall, she says she would not recommend the keto diet to her patients. Instead, she suggests following the USDA's healthy plate. <laughs> Somewhere Barclay Bishop is about to storm the studio. <laughs> Delete that story from our archives. It was just a national story, Barclay, that we chose to run. <laughs> Don't go away. Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller up next with a look at your forecast. The question is, now that we know what's in our soil, what's in your water? Yes, right. <laughs> is something that is on a lot of people's minds, especially at the state level in South Carolina. Tim, no, what were you going to say? <laughs> yes, this is a wonderful science lesson here on News Channel 6 at 4. We're going to let you know why DHEC is getting involved when we come back. Hi, just $5.95. And don't miss our other great mattress buys at the Rooms to Go storewide mattress sale. There are so many options when it comes to choosing a personal injury lawyer. <laughs> some claim to get you big bucks, and some say they never lose. So how do you choose? We say, at the end of the day, it's not about us. It's about you. It's about you. At the iColts Law Firm, we will work to get you the justice you deserve. a team and new network powered by terry lambert hyundai low prices big selection and committed to quality customer service join us for earth day augusta saturday april 22nd from 10 to 3 at vincent swamp nature park enjoy eco-friendly arts and crafts food entertainment and fun for the whole family and it's free to the public visit earthdayaugusta.org for more info we are continuing to learn more about forever chemicals and how they're found in just about everything. The South Carolina State Health Department is doing a lot of research on them, as Henry Coburn reports. From cosmetics to nonstick skillets and packaging to firefighting foams, you probably run into PFAS in your day-to-day -day life. Although the dangers of the chemical are still under investigation, they're believed to be linked to increased risks of certain cancers, weaker immune systems, and issues for pregnant women. Over the last several months, DHEC has put a spotlight on these forever chemicals in our drinking water. The EPA last month even proposed legal limits on these chemicals in tap water. EPA announced the proposed national primary drinking water regulations for six PFAS compounds. EPA says they anticipate finalizing the regulation by the end of 2023. DHEC leaders discussed the next phase of digging into PFAS. 
figuring out how they're getting into the environment, and eventually, by extension, back to us. We're just looking at the many ways that these chemicals can find their way to our environment and ultimately lead to exposure to citizens in South Carolina. Over the last year, they've tested for 26 PFAS compounds in over 100 bodies of water across South Carolina. They're also testing freshwater fish, oysters, and blue crabs at certain sites to see how much these forever chemicals have leached into the environment. This data is really going to speak to us if we see some areas of the state, some of our waterways have elevated levels. Is there something that's going on there that's very localized? And that's when we really drill down to what are some potential sources. DNA crews have already begun their fourth round of water sampling. Yeah, and they're going to continue their work throughout this spring. There is more coverage you can count on coming up next on News Channel 6 at 4.30. We hope you'll stay with us for that. Lionel Swift, limited to only the finest in men's clothing. The Live Piper 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. What another absolutely beautiful day today with lots of sunshine and some great temperatures. We're going to continue this trend into your Friday, but the big question is, what about the weekend? We'll talk about the changes headed our way with your 5 6 forecast. Right now on News Channel 6 at 6, a local school for underserved students announcing a big award today. Plus, the problem with Beach Island's aging water system and plans to fix it following a business fire. And a family seeking justice and peace after the murder of a loved one. Details in our cold case project as your news at 6 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 6. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thanks so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with a local school for neurodivergent and underserved students celebrating a big award today with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. Hannah Latier joining us now live from the Satellite News Center with more. Hannah, this is a really big deal. That's right, Jenny. Soar Academy in Evans received a $500,000 award from the Yacht Prize organization, beating out some serious competitions. Three, two, one, cut! Out of 2,700 applicants, Soar was one of nine schools across the nation selected for the award. So we fund private schools, tr uh, traditional public schools, charter schools, micro schools. But what stood out to us for SOAR was really their ability to give an amazing individualized option for families who really need it. The school gives this individualized education to students with autism, ADHD, dyslexia, and other learning disabilities. But our model is to catch those kids up that are falling between the cracks. We're after the kids that no one wants, and they come here you know, they got these resumes that are just terrible behavioral um, defiance, uh, anxiety, and the class shuts down. And you come here, smaller environment, multi-sensory, flexible schedule, and they're soaring. All that goes away. And Isha is proud of their success stories, especially when it comes to reading levels. Tiana's also here. She started just last year. She's not an adult yet, but she was at first grade level in 10th grade. And now she's just about on grade level. So if she had stayed in the traditional school, there are no options for her post-graduation, but now she has options to succeed. With the money, they plan to purchase land to expand the school in the next few years. They also plan on having enough space for more students to enroll by fall. Like, we need a soar in every community, right? Every community has students who learn differently. And it's not a competition between different schools. We believe in collaboratively working with other schools and allowing families to pick the best environment for their own kids. Kanisha hopes to one day expand SOAR Academy nationwide, and the deadline to apply for the 2023 Yacht Prize is July 15th. Live in the Satellite News Center, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. The Beach Island Water District trying to get a grant. The city of Augusta reacting to a ruling on the Lock and Dam. Who? News Channel 6's George Escala has the story. This federal court ruling puts the Corps of Engineers' plan to replace Lock and Dam with a rock fish passage back in play. You know, it really hurts. I'm really disappointed that that Fourth Circuit Appeals Court uh, decided.
does not rule in our favor. The city is joining the lawsuit against the Coors plan because of what it does to the downtown pool. A simulation river drawdown in 2019 caused tens of thousands of dollars in damage. It left behind a mess, something Augusta doesn't want to see permanently. This is the river that we're used to seeing. We built on it. We built towards it. Um, do you really want to have a river walk that's 100 yards from where the river actually is? But even though the appeals court called the argument to prevent the Corps from removing the dam absurd, the city is vowing to keep up the legal fight, though it will cost. Spending more tax dollars to fight the fight because economically uh, we have to have the ability to control our pool level at the Savannah River. But the ri for compromise. I don't think they should fight it out in court. I'd love to sit down and have some, some legitimate compromise. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, you know, go, going to court is is uh, never bad for lawyers' paychecks. But to keep Lock and Dam going back to court looks to be the city's only option. In Augusta, Georgia, Stella, WJBF, News Channel 6. Coverage of the have updates on the investigations into shootings across the country. Shootings that appear to have happened because of people mistakenly being in the wrong place. We'll have that story when we come back. But first, to look at what's coming up tonight on News Nation. A breaking news nation. Four young people are dead following a string of troubling shootings around the country. Morgan Norwood now with more. In less than a week, four young people in this country have been shot or killed after making one of the most common mistakes, being in the wrong place. 20-year-old Kaylin Gillis was shot and killed in upstate New York when authorities with a car she was in pulled into the wrong driveway. Kevin Monaghan, the man who allegedly fired that deadly shot, apparently is caught wasted, charged with second-degree murder in connection with her death. He did not enter a plea. Look, my, my client was involved in a series of tragic mistakes made by more than one person that resulted in the death of a young lady and he feels terrible that a life was lost. The judge, though, denied bail for the father of Kaylin Gillis now speaking out. My daughter was a, an honor student. She had hopes and dreams of becoming a marine biologist or a veterinarian. It all comes after the shooting of Ralph Law, the 16-year-old in Kansas City, who was shot twice, once in the head, after approaching the wrong house to pick up his brother. The 85-year-old homeowner, Andrew Lester, accused of shooting him, has pled not guilty. And in this grocery store parking lot just outside of Austin, Texas, Peyton Washington, Heather Ross, and two other members of the Woodland Elite Cheer Company were headed home from practice when Ross says she tried to get into a car she thought belonged to her and saw a man inside. She quickly went back to her friend's car, but the man walked over as Ross tried to apologize. Please, hold up, I've got to just, I need to start shooting at all of us. Ross breathed by a bullet in the gunfire. Washington suffered serious injuries and was taken to a hospital. The suspect in that case, now in custody. And new this afternoon, a six-year-old girl and her father were covering after they were shot allegedly by a neighbor because a basketball rolled into his yard. Authorities launching a massive manhunt for that neighbor, 24-year-old Robert Louis Singletary, who remains on the loose. Why did he shoot my daddy and me? Because he shoot a kid's dad. And Singletary is charged with four counts of attempted murder, along with several other felonies. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. And step back to check our forecast. So we've been in the 80s, which is a little warmer than average, but that's going to be switchy. Notice uh, the 26th and the 30th, we're going to have an opportunity for some really cool air that will be headed our way. We'll talk about that with your forecast all coming up. Wow, spruce up your outdoor space for less this year at Carolina Pottery. Huge selections of quality all-weather wicker and Hollywood furniture, all at our everyday low prices. Visit carolinapottery.com or a store near you. It sounded like a loud party. Need new furniture for your patio? At Carolina Pottery, we have quality furniture, top-of-the-line cushions at everyday low prices. Shop and compare. You won't find a better value anywhere. Visit carolinapottery.com or a store near you. The 10-day forecast.